So that's one that we'll come back to a lot. Um, the last uh, condition is continuous dependence, okay? And uh, in order to prove this, we need to prove that it, you know, I can change the initial conditions of uh, my, my initial value problem by a little bit, and it's going to continuously change my solutions, okay? So again, I'm going to suppose that U and V solve a pair of IBPs, but they're not going to be the same ones uh, as they were when I proved uniqueness, the one for you is going to be a little bit different than the one for me. Okay, so in this case, u of x zero is equal to uh, some u zero of x. Okay, on x is in r. Okay, and then v sub t is equal to uh, plus. Is equal to uh, v sub t plus c uh, vx is equal to zero, and v of x zero is equal to some initial condition v zero of x. And again, we have the same domains for each problem. Okay. All right. So that's our initial value problem. Okay. And from uh, this one for u, we can get that u of x t is equal to u zero of x minus c t. And this one for v implies that v is equal to v zero of x minus c t. Okay. And uh, by uniqueness, they're the uh, only solutions that we're going to have. Okay. So we know that they're the only ones we need to be looking at, okay? All right, so I'm gonna advance the board. Is that okay? All right. So what we can do then is that we can say that we wanna know um, how different U and V are, okay, depending on their initial data, okay? So the infinity norm is really just the max of their difference, okay? And this is going to be equal to just the max over some argument that we plug in to their initial functions, okay, u0 and v0. In other words, this is just the infinity norm of the difference between u0 and v0, okay? So what's nice about this then is as long as um, u0 and v0, okay, have an infinity norm difference that's less than some parameter epsilon, and we can we can make that small, okay. So i.e. u0 and v0 are close, okay, to each other. Then what that implies is that u of x minus t minus v of x t um, is that's equal okay to this infinity norm here so that's also bounded by epsilon okay and so that means that u and v are close to each other okay and this is true for any t Okay, greater than or equal to zero. So this should give you a flavor of what you should look for in a continuous dependence proof, okay? What you're gonna try to do is 
look at the difference, the, the norm difference between uh, two related initial value problems and bound it by some norm difference of your initial conditions, okay? It's certainly not always gonna work out this cleanly, okay? But we're usually gonna use something like, uh, you know, functional analysis or sort of norms or metrics or, you know, different, different tools from inner products and norms in order to build up these bounds, okay? And so this often uses what's called functional analysis, okay? This is pr proofs on functions using, you know, in, inner products and norms and other tools, okay? So um, in order to um, uh, just sort of wrap up this example, what I'd like to do now is, is turn to another PDE um, that is not uh, well posed. And uh, this kind of gives you a contrasting case of, uh, of a situation where um, you're, you're, gonna have a, you're gonna have a breakdown in one of these conditions, okay? So before we move on um, from well-posedness, let's talk about uh, an example of an ill-posed PD, okay? So I like this one because there's some physical intuition that comes with it, okay? And um, it's a PD that we come across a lot, but usually not with a particular parameter value that I'm gonna talk about, okay? So let's say that we have the, the following PDE, okay? This is the heat equation just in uh, one dimension, okay? Or the diffusion equation in one dimension. What happens with the diffusion equation? Well, as long as the uh, diffusion coefficient is positive, everything spreads out, okay? So think of you know gas in a room, or you know dropping a, a blot of ink into a fluid. It's going to spread out, okay? As long as we have a positive diffusion coefficient, okay? So if everything's already flat, right? If u of x zero is equal to one, what we should expect is that uh, we're going to have uh, just a, a solution that remains flat, okay? So what we can show is that this has a solution, okay? U of x t is equal to one, okay? So can show existence and uniqueness, okay? But here we will focus on continuous uh, dependence, okay? Because there's an interesting thing that happens when uh, we look at a nearby initial value problem, okay? So here's, here's a nearby initial value problem, okay? It has the same PDE, okay? V sub T equals K uh, V sub XX, okay? But we're going to take sort of a peculiar set of initial conditions. Vn of x at zero is equal to one, just plus one over n sine of n x. Okay, uh, x lives in R here. Okay, so now. I will just give you the solution to this PDE. Uh, you can verify it yourself if you like, okay? The solution to this PDE is one plus one over n sine of nx e to the minus k n squared t, okay? And I'll say verify on your own. You can verify it just by plugging it into the PDE. Okay, so what's the big deal, okay? Well, what we can show is that if we uh, have a positive diffusion coefficient, everything's fine, and you would think physically everything should be fine 
if you have a positive diffusion coefficient. Everything's gonna smooth out, okay? Any PD that sort of makes things smoother typically is going to be well-behaved, well-posed. The problem comes in is what if we consider the diffusion coefficient with a negative, uh, diffusion equation with a negative diffusion coefficient or a heat equation with a, with a negative coefficient? The issue is that now you have things that are spread out that somehow you're trying to run backwards in time, okay? And there's multiple issues with this, but we'll, we'll show what happens in terms of continuous dependence, okay? So let's just work out the result for a continuous dependence, okay? So if we wanna look at continuous dependence, let's just follow our nose based on what we did for the transport equation. I'm gonna take uh, u of x zero minus vn of x zero, okay? I'm gonna take its infinity norm, and that's just the max over uh, x of one minus one plus one over n sine of uh, nx. And what's this going to be? Do I need another parenthesis there? This is just gonna be one over n, okay? So as n goes to infinity, okay, this is arbitrarily small, okay? Great, so we can put their initial conditions as close together as we like, okay? But the infinity norm of the difference of the solutions is equal to what? Well, it's gonna be equal to the max over uh, x and r, okay, of one over n sine of nx, okay, nothing too bad yet, e to the minus k n squared t, okay, and this is equal to one over n e to the minus k n squared t, okay? So now we can see the issue with diffusion equations with negative diffusion coefficients, okay? This can be made arbitrarily large if k is less than zero, okay? Now you probably didn't have to see this in order to, you know, uh, speculate that dif running diffusion backwards may be problematic, okay? But this is an example of why, okay? And so the cool thing about this is that it really comes with a physical interpretation, okay? If you'd never tried this before, this would tell you that diffusion is irreversible, okay? Let's say you start out with some, you know, substance, some chemical that's distributed in a substrate and you let it diffuse. And, if, and eventually in the long time limit, everything is at equilibrium, everything's spread out, okay? There's no way you can now run everything backwards and try and learn the original concentration that that came from because you lose the memory of the initial condition, which is, which is mollified by the diffusion process, okay? So think of, think of ink dropping in the water. So, so this basically places a physical and mathematical restriction on uh, the coefficient. So K it has to be greater than zero, okay? You can also check this numerically. If you try and solve a diffusion equation using um, you know, finite difference or something like that, and you have a negative diffusion coefficient, you get all sorts of instabilities and things like that. Okay, so that's the last example I wanna go through today. Are there uh, questions or comments? 
Yeah, I have a question. Um, sure. So if we're, if we're considering the reverse heat equation with some initial condition, we're not saying that there's no solution to that. We're just saying that there, that it's a waste of time to try to numerically compute it, right? Right, because you're always going to, uh, you know, discretize your equation. And so anytime you don't have nice continuous dependence of solutions on initial conditions or parameters, uh, you're going to have numerical solutions that deviate strongly from analytical solutions. So yeah, we can come up with these analytical solutions, but because they violate continuous dependence, um, you, you can't uh, trust them very well in this case. And I suppose there's, it doesn't really even make sense to consider continuous dependence if you don't already have existence and uniqueness, right? Because then it's not a function of the initial conditions. Yeah, I mean, if you have existence, but you don't have uniqueness, you could look into um, con continuous dependence, right? But, uh, but you're, you're saying, well, continuous dependence of my multiplicity of solutions on, on initial conditions. Mm -hmm. So you, you've lost well-posedness, but that, just because you don't have well-posedness, I, I want to emphasize that doesn't mean you can't study that model. It means you're going to potentially run into problems if you, you know, numerically simulate or need to um, interpret the outputs of that model. Yeah. So, by and large, it's best if you have a well-posed problem, um, and and the ones that we will study. Uh, in this class, the canonical examples uh, typically are. Uh, those are the safe ones, but in reality, research may lead you to ill-posed problems, and so you at least want to be aware of this uh, when you're wading into that, that territory. Okay, so um, as I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just record uh, a lecture for uh, Friday. I'll probably actually do that this afternoon and get it posted. Have people gone to the YouTube page and found the lectures? Yeah. Okay, so some people, I guess whoever went there, did what you, were, you were able to find the lectures. Okay, cool. So uh, that's where the lectures will go. Uh, I, yeah, I'm recording the one today. So again, I'll, I'll chop.